Hey guys, well it's been quite some time since I introduced my Cinemeric style screens and I've been working on them to convert my ATC screens over to the Cinemeric style. I finally got that completed and now I'm able to offer the ATC screens for the 8 tool, 10 tool, and 12 tool rotary ATC in the Cinemeric style. I've made quite a bit of changes to this screen since I first introduced it. The main screen here you can see is basically the same but I've added a couple of features. We have this LED up here so if you're running in millimeters this LED right here will turn on. Uh, I'm running in inches so it's off. We have our LEDs here for whether or not we're referenced. I've added this reference all button here and removed the bar button that was over here. Just kind of clean that up a little bit so we can reference our axes. So these buttons kind of evolved from the Cinemeric 808D controller style. We have our basic buttons here, our reset button. You can see we have our LEDs that turn green when we're uh, not in a reset condition. We have our cycle start cycle stop, a feed hold button, a hand wheel button that will pop up our jog box over here. We have our M1 optional stop button so if you have M1 command in your g-code and you want to enable that you can press this button here. We have a over, uh, no rapid override button so if you wanting to run uh, your particular program without rapids. If you're doing some testing you can override your rapids. Turn your jog on and off. We have our soft limits and no soft limits. Of course our reference all which I just showed you. We have our flood. Now this can be used for flood and or mist. However I run flood. And then we have our spindle on and off button. Now this will turn green when the spindle is on and red when the spindle is off. Another feature I've added to this button is we have our work coordinates up here. We're currently in G54. Uh, we have some tool information here. This particular tool symbol will flash yellow when a tool change is in progress. We have some feed information and our spindle information. Another feature that I've added on the Cinemeric style screen is this MDI command line. Uh, also if there's any files loaded they will show up here. We have our tool display window and a nice big g-code window. So this is the main Cinemeric screen. As you can see not all of the standard Mach 3 main screen information is here. I didn't want to clutter this screen up. So you still have your standard mock screen. However, I think after using this for a little while you'll find this more uh, more useful and a lot clearer understanding of what's going on. Uh, we have a probing screen with my automatic touch probe routines for touching off the corners, internal diameter, external diameter, uh, touching off the top of your part for your z-height and each edge. These are just basic probing routines. All of these should be used with caution with whatever touch probe you're using as well as breakout boards, any of the Ethernet smooth steppers and so on and so forth. So you need to use this screen with caution. We have uh, your settings tab, diagnostics, your MDI, offsets. This is your standard offset screen. Here we have our ATC screen. I have this available in an 8, 10, or 12 tool ATC. All of these screens are similar except for the carousel graphic. Now you can use any tool number in any slot position up to tool number 99. 
So you're not limited to using tools number 1 through 12. Uh, this makes my screens unique from anything else I've seen out there. So let's go over some of the features on this particular screen. So we're using our C-axis to rotate our carousel. Now you can use a servo or stepper motor and simply use it to rotate your carousel directly or with the gearbox. Or you can use a Geneva wheel type mechanism to rotate your carousel using a servo or stepper. So up here we have our DROs for X, Y, and Z, A, and C, feed rate, spindle, our tool information here. And then over here we have our ATC portion. Now, this is the slot we're currently rotated to. This is the tool number that is currently in the spindle. We have a graphic here that will let you know that the tool is clamped or unclamped. We have a power draw bar button to manually release and clamp the tool. Now this is set up on a three second delay so if we press this button you will see that it will go green for three seconds. Also notice that the tool will go red signifying that the tool is unclamped and green for clamped. We have our ATC retract and extend button. When we press this button, the ATC will extend. Notice that the green arrow turns green for activated. Once the ATC has extended, you have it set up for a limit switch to let you know that it is fully extended and you will get this green box around here signifying the fact that it is in fact uh, extended. When we press retract we will get the green box letting you know that the ATC is retracted. We also use these inputs in our tool change macro to make sure that the carousel is clear from the spindle before we continue. We have a low air LED here, so if we have sufficient air, we will get a green LED. Now this is optional, and I'll show you that in a minute. If there's not enough sufficient air to extend or retract your carousel, it will also error out for those particular situations. Uh, we have our no rapid override here, and delete all. If we press this button, it will prompt us to delete all the data in the carousel and it will reset everything to zero. If you choose not to do so, you can simply hit no and it'll exit out of that. And then up here we have our setup button. If we click this button, it will take us to the setup screen. Very easy to set up your ATC. We have our load plane. This is the height of the Z axis to load and unload the carousel. You simply jog the Z into position and press the set button. That's all you have to do and it will automatically get the information and input the correct height in the DRO here. Likewise, we have our Z clearance plane. You simply jog the Z axis up above the tool holder, press the set button and it will automatically update this DRO to the correct height for that. Over here we can turn our jog on and off while you're on the screen and also our air switch. So if we do not have a low air sensor connected we can simply turn that off and then it will not go out and look for that input during a tool change. We also have our tool change feed rate. This is the feed rate in which we are going to retrieve and place the tool into the holder. And then we have a delay. Uh, this is the, the delay is for the amount of time to clamp and unclamp the tool to make sure that it is secured or released, as well as 
This delay is used for extend and retract of the ATC. Now that we have our ATC set up, we can manually load some tools. Now, there are a couple ways we can manually load the tools. We can simply press the power draw bar and this will open up the spindle for three seconds and allow us to insert a tool. We can also click on any one of these slot numbers to manually load a tool into that particular slot. So if we click on slot 12, would you like to load tool number 19? It looks and sees what tool is actually in that position and asks you if you want to load that into the spindle. We do not, so we're going to say no. What's going to happen is the carousel is going to rotate to slot number 12 and then it's going to ask you to insert a new tool number. So we can put in tool number 99 in slot 12 and remove tool 19 manually by hand. And so now we have tool 99 loaded in slot 12. We can also manually load the tool into the spindle. So in order to do that, we simply press the slot number for the particular tool we're wishing to load into the spindle. So if we want to load tool number one, we press one. Would you like to load tool number one? Yes, we would. What's going to happen is we're going to place tool number seven back into slot seven and then we're going to rotate over to slot one and get tool number one. So here we go. All right, the first thing it says is we have low air pressure because our air pressure LED here is not active. You will get this fault if you do not have enough air pressure. We can disable that by going to the air pressure switch here on the set setup screen. So let's try this again. We're going to load tool one. Yes. All right. We're now rotating to slot number seven. Drop off tool seven. We've extended our ATC. It is in fact extended. We've released that tool. We're now going to slot number one. We've clamped it. We've retracted and that tool change is complete. And we now have tool number one loaded into the spindle. So that's how you manually can load a tool. Uh, and it works the same way when we're doing a tool change. So we do M6 T7. Okay, so we get this fault saying that the ATC was not extended because we did not get our extend input. So now we have that, we've corrected the problem. We've released the tool. We're moving to slot seven. We've clamped the tool, retracted the ATC. We got our input and now the tool change is complete. So you can see it's very simple. Uh, and you can see from all the different inputs and LEDs how everything is interacting. Again, this is available in the 8, 10, and 12 tool ATC. If you have any special custom needs, would you like a graphic on this particular screen or maybe on the setup screen, we can add some logos or graphics. Uh, you can contact me for that. But the basic screens are now available on the website at www.cnc4xr7.com. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment. Thanks for watching the videos. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And most importantly, be safe.